Welcome aboard this flight to the greatest stars. Sit back and have a nice trip. While Americans dominated the post-war years in the 100 and 200 meters, their stranglehold on the 400 meters was broken by runners from Jamaica. In 1948, 
Herb McKenley had just missed out on a medal in the 200 metres. In the 400, he was the clear favourite. McKenley's normal tactic was to run as fast as he could for as long as he could and then hold on into the final stretch. But in the last 100 metres, McKenley was tiring badly and his teammate, the 6'4", Arthur Wint, beat him to the tape. Harrison Dillard took gold in 1948, but in 1952, the Americans were pushed much harder. In a blanket finish, the first four athletes were given the same time of 10.4 seconds. It took a photo to decide the outcome. American Lindy Remigino was given the gold medal. He finished one inch ahead of Jamaica's Herb McKenley. I grew up in Jamaica, where a lot of our running was done on the streets, kidding around. And when I got to high school, the track court saw me running. And of course, I was running against a lot of fat kids, and of course, I must have looked very good. And he came out, came to me and asked me to come out for training. And I asked him, training for what, sir? And he said, um, to run. So I said, I can run already, sir. I don't have to train. Thornton and the support of Herb McKendley and Glenn Mills up from Jamaica, Stewart and Smith will run on the TCU 4x100 relay team, which will try to win an NCAA championship. On your mark. Set. And get a good start. Get a good start. He's up there. Program just go on with it. Yo, have a good time, girl. Free 
you put your mind, kind of body can't this your man won't let it. Cause you are the number one girl, wave your hand, make them see the wedding band, yo. Sexy ladies want power with them. Although Britain's expansion period lasted over 300 years from 1602 to 1919, the final balance sheet of London's port cities documented only 12,103 slave crossings between Britain and British colonial ports from 1699 to 1807. It is documented elsewhere that approximately 6 million Africans were violently removed from Africa and transported as slaves across the transatlantic crossing to the Americas and the West Indies between 1662 and 1833. Ships' records indicate that a minimum of 300 slaves and 55 crewmen were on a typical ship. Ships containing English textiles, cutlery, and English firearms left on the first leg of the journey from the British ports of London, Bristol, and Liverpool to Africa's west coast. The ships traveled south from the Guinea coast with stops at British colonial ports along the west coast of Africa before completing the second leg of the triangle known as the Transatlantic Crossing. Port stops resulted in trading English goods with Africans for African slaves. The Efik branch of the Ibibio people populated one such port. This economy was based on the slave trade and was located in the Kingdom of Calabar on the southeastern corner of where is now called Nigeria. It is here that our journey, the Chronicles of Rabelak, begins. This work intends to provide a brief glimpse into the history of Calabar from 1843 to 1966. This presentation also highlights some of the outstanding events of 2007 put on by the Calabar Old Boys Association and also provides a brief and by no means comprehensive listing of distinguished Calabar alumni. Calabar is located within the zone of the River Cross of Calabar and the Great Qua Rivers and sits some 30 miles inland from the ocean. The first recorded trade contact with Old Calabar occurred in 1668. It is not clear whether Calabar was derived from Calabara or Calaboras, Portuguese origins meaning the bar is silent, referring to the calm waters of the estuary. The Dutch refer to this location as Old Calberg, 